is that it also falls with Halloween. So for our for our next video, we are going to be making some bat wings. Mm -hmm. And I thought that we would feature the red bat for this video. Yeah, so the eastern red bat is a species of bat that we also have here in Ontario. Cool. So that's great, we've got a red umbrella right yep. there. And like, well, for this crop, we only want to use umbrellas that are already broken. Don't go out and get a new one, because I know that everybody has a broken umbrella at home. Um, and this is a crop that you want to do with an adult. It's not something that you should do by yourself, because there is some serious cutting going on. Um, so, the first thing you're going to do is open it up. You're going to open it up flat. Ah! <laughs> And you're going to need these kind of tools, something like a wire cutter. Um, these are called snub nose pliers. And the first thing you're gonna do is cut this part that angles down, and then there's going to be another part that attaches itself here. So we're gonna cut that off. Nice sharp wire cutters. So I'm just gonna go around the umbrella and do that to every single section. So why don't you give us some red bat bags? Yeah, so that. our red bats, they're another migratory species and um, they, um, most bats usually only have one baby at a time. So, but red bats, they can have up to five babies. But not only that, is that each baby weighs about 30% of the mother's body weight. Whoa. So that would essentially be like me carrying 200 pounds of baby <laughs> while still needing to fly and still needing to feed myself. My goodness. Um, but they they fly south for the winter, but they do they do hibernate kind of not as cold. Um, some places that are kind of like have milder winters, they'll hibernate, but did you know that they actually, some of them hibernate underneath the leaves? So it's really important that um, when you, when all the, especially in the fall, when the leaves fall off the trees, that you don't want to rake them all away because they're really important habitat for many different uh, organisms, things like worms, things like butterfly larvae, um, toads will hibernate underneath leaves but so will bats. Wow. So you could have a pile of leaves and there might be a bat nest inside of it? Um, well, bats are, uh, red bats are solitary, so um, there could be, but whether you find one is, uh, it'll be very lucky if you do actually find okay. one like that. Um, but no, it's always good to kind of keep your garden natural mm -hmm. and at least keep some leaves for the animals. All right, I'm almost there. I got two more prongs to cut. <laughs> like I said, it's a little bit tricky. Okay. Are red bats the only ones that will hibernate in leaves like that, or are there other types? Oh, there are other species of bats in the world that will hibernate on the ground. Yep. Um, some kind of in little snow pockets. Yeah. Um, but in terms of Ontario, those are the species that will kind of hibernate. Um, I mean, like there um, can be found in leaf litter. Okay, so now that that's all cut up, the next thing you're going to do is, well, these are all very sharp, so you have to be very careful. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna find a triangle and you're just going to cut two that are opposite of each other. So I'm going to cut this one here and this one over there. And you're just gonna cut along the metal piece. It's kind of tricky to see. Do you need to hold that for you, Kat? Yeah, maybe. Just so that everybody can see what we're doing here. Yeah, great. I can't believe five babies. That's a lot. It is. <laughs> but no, sometimes people think bats are rodents, 
because of how small that small they are. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the main differences between them is that bats um, are very slow to reproduce, so they have usually only one baby at a time, but rodents can have many, many babies several times of the year. So that means that um, if anything ever happens to our bat population, it will take a very, very long time for them to recover because they don't have babies as fast as, as some other animals. I'm just fascinated with what you're doing here. <laughs> I'm forgetting all about bats. <laughs> okay, and the next part now is just to cut off this middle part. So I'm just gonna go into it with my cutters here. Maybe I'll choose these instead. we're gonna have to tape all the little sharp pieces. I'm using electrical tape, it's probably the best one, and that's just to make sure that we're safe, okay? Did you wanna help do some of those? Sure. Okay. Maybe while we do this, you can give us some more really cool bat facts. So did you know that bats actually hold the record for being the fastest mammal in the world? Really? Yeah. So free-tailed, free -tailed, Mexican free-tailed bats can fly at 160 kilometers an hour, but our cheetahs yeah. only reach, temp uh, reach max speeds at 120 kilometers an hour. Oh my gosh, this whole entire time I literally thought it was cheetahs only. Nope, nope, <laughs> bats, bats went out on that one. That's so neat. And bats are very long-lived animals. I can't remember if I've mentioned this before in another video, but um, bats, some species of bats can live up to 30 to 40 years. Really? Yeah, like our, our species of bat that we have, the little brown myotis. And so what people are doing um, are, because these tiny little animals can live so long, scientists are researching why that is. And the benefit of that is that they're trying to figure out how we can help fight against uh, aging diseases. Um, so they're using bats as a model to help kind of better our lives. Wow. Um, other kind of medical uh, facts about bats is that, um, so <laughs> we mentioned the vampire bat earlier. Right. Uh, with the special saliva. Mm -hmm. uh, they developed a drug using that special saliva, the drug called Draculin of all things. Um, and it helps um, break down blood clots. So people, um, people who are at risk of heart attacks, at stroke, um, this is the type of, uh, of uh, medicine to help for that. Okay, uh, so the last step for this, after you've taped all of them, you're just gonna add some ribbon to the ends. And then you're gonna add ribbon to the middle. Here, I'll pass you one of these to that side. Is complete. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Let's see if I can get this. <gasps> <Play> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> 
so now you have to throw out all your old umbrellas, and then this is what you can do with it. And remember, there's so many species of bats in the world, any umbrella pattern will work. Yeah. Choose your favorite at merlintuttle.org, or, or look up pictures of bats um, on bat conservation websites. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you again for joining us today. Um, tomorrow is our last, our last bat craft day. Um, so stay tuned for that and also keep checking Trauma Zoo's Facebook page, Instagram and Twitter as well as batweek.org. See you then.